At Microsoft, you lead initiatives related to causal machine learning, notably the PyY open source library. So maybe you could tell us about what causal machine learning is kind of at, at a high level. Uh, causal machine learning is the intersection of causal methods with, um, with machine learning. Uh, um, so conventional machine learning methods, they uh, look for patterns in data to make predictions, to classify things, and they always find patterns in data, even if they are not real, if they're spurious uh, patterns. Now, the, the problem then is that um, though the machine learning is assuming that those patterns are the same in their training data and in their deployed environment, usually. And what, um, what this means is that if those patterns change for whatever reason, the machine learning models fail. Um, this can happen for any number of reasons, distribution shift, uh, uh, et cetera. The way that causal machine learning helps is that it uses uh, domain knowledge, kind of causal assumptions about the underlying mechanisms of, the gra of, uh, of a system to guide the machine learning models to pay attention to the cause and effect relationships, only the, the right patterns. And those cause and effect relationships, because they're more fundamental to the um, mechanisms that govern the, the system or the data generating process, uh, they're more stable. Even when exogenous factors, mm. other things change in you know, uh, surrounding your system, your model of the internal mechanisms, the endogenous mechanisms still, still remains. Even if one of these mechanisms, mechanisms change, the others um, uh, uh, are, more, are more likely to, to stay uh, the same as wow. well. Mm -hmm. Um, so causal machine learning is the area where we are using causality to help machine learning. And then also where we're using machine learning methods to help causal, causal methods, for example, to help them apply to high dimensional, right. um, multidimensional data on structured text images, things like that. Uh, super interesting. So it sounds like the, it, this is kind of a blend of different areas of approaches. So, um, so causal inference is typically under the purview of statistics, econometrics, whereas machine learning comes from a different lineage. So machine learning grew out of computer science, really, and this idea of working with very large data sets, whereas those other approaches, statistics, econometrics, that causal inference techniques came out of, those fields typically, typically were dealing with um, smaller data sets and worried about things like statistical significance. Um, so yeah, this does sound like a really interesting blend. Um, and it's nice to hear from you that it works both ways, that both um, causal methods can be applied to machine learning to allow us to, um, to, to draw conclusions that otherwise wouldn't be possible, um, while it also goes the other way where we can use machine learning um, on top of causal methods to be dealing with much larger data sets than maybe traditional uh, causal approaches would work with. Yeah, there's um, causal causal methods in general uh, have developed in in uh, across a huge number of communities, independent, like almost independently. Um, and you know, we have the computer science approaches, like the Pearly and Judea Pearls approaches to modeling causal graphs and doing causal reasoning, uh, coming from part of uh, computer science. We have uh, statisticians, econometricians, you know, doing like potential outcomes. We have people in the health field. We have people in the in the in the uh, in genetics who are able to do much more um, uh, structured, take make much more structured and stronger assumptions than we can in many many other domains. Developing specialized methods, and now what we're seeing is we're seeing all these areas start to come together a lot more. We're seeing a lot more conversations across communities and a lot more thought going into how we can start to uh, use methods uh, together. Awesome. So how are causal machine learning methods um, fundamentally different from correlational machine learning uh, methods that most data scientists are already familiar with? So mm -hmm. in data science, you know, a, a very common method would be linear regression, or, you know, today we have a lot of uh, interest in deep learning algorithms. And the way that those algorithms work out of the box all that they can do is identify correlations between variable X and variable Y. Uh, with deep learning, these can be nonlinear relationships, but a deep learning algorithm has no more sense of causal direction. You know, does X cause the variation in Y 
or does Y cause the variation in X? So um, I don't know if you're able to uh, explain in a, in a podcast without visuals or or without going into mathematical equations, but what are we able to to do with causal machine learning approaches to to take some information like that to say, okay, our our linear regression model or our deep learning model suggests this strong correlation between X and Y. What can we, then we do on top of that to infer causal direction and say X is causing Y? Yeah. Um, um, I'll try and go, go uh, at a very high level and then go down at least one more level after that. So at a very high level, the difference between uh, causal machine learning and conventional machine learning is that causal machine learning um, does not just look at the data. It uh, takes a representation of uh, domain knowledge or uh, causal assumptions um, and uses that to uh, guide what the machine learning should be doing. So uh, in, in your episode with Jennifer Hill, she, uh, she mentioned that if anyone uh, comes to you and says that they have a, um, a method to, to get at causality just from data, an assumption-free method, I think she said, um, don't believe them because you you can't. And so we're in that same we're in that same boat. We're playing in the same um, right. under the same restrictions. Um, in order to get at uh, cause and effect relationships with machine learning, we need to bring in uh, assumptions, and we encode those assumptions so that we can reason over them. So we use, uh, for example, uh, Perlian approaches, for example. Um, and that then tells us, um, um, uh, that then gives us that like key difference. Um, going down one uh, uh, level, for example, if we want to know how much um, some uh, treatment A influences some outcome B, and we know that there's a confounder, we know how that, that the fact that that confounder influences both of these other variables, both the treatment and the outcome, then we can condition on that variable, or we can, you know, use uh, uh, any number of methods um, um, in, you know, to 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 essentially match uh, and create something that's equivalent of an RCT on the difference in A, uh, and then measure that's from that. Optimized control trial. So, yeah. so, um, so something that came up with Professor Hill in her episode was this idea that the only way to be a hundred percent sure that you have uh, that that variable X is causing variable Y is in a randomized control trial where you are controlling variable X. And so, what you're saying is that there are situations um, where we can use um, conditioning um, on variables to to make the assumption that uh, that X is causing Y. That's right, and it is an assumption that you know we have to we have to assume that we're conf with, that we're able to condition on all the necessary variables um, and an rct's right. benefit is that because you're flipping a coin you know that nothing else is influencing the treatment likelihood right 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 mm -hmm. so uh so when we're making the assumption i guess the kind of thing uh, there there could be situations where there is some some unmeasured extra variable that uh unexpectedly is causing the impact in both X and Y. Um, and so that's why things like domain knowledge um, are critical to being able to say, okay, you know, based on our understanding of how this phenomenon works, um, it is unlikely that there is some third variable that we haven't accounted for. Um, is, is that kind of how it works? Um, uh, yes. So you can do uh, sensitivity analyses and other things to make sure to like get a better of understanding of whether there might be other confounders and what uh, if so, how strong that confounder has to be to mess up your conclusions. Um, but but that's the end, a, 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 a essence of it is that we're making these assumptions. That's driving how we condition or you know what types of um, constraints we put on like our loss functions or or uh, for example.